How much water have you drunk today? It's perhaps something you don't give much thought to, but water is essential for life. It makes up a significant portion of the human body and keeps us healthy. So we all need access to clean drinking water. Unfortunately, there are hundreds of thousands of Australians, typically in rural locations and especially in remote communities, they don't have that. Even if they can have the water out of the tap, the water that they drink is not good quality. That's Quinton Grafton. He's a professor of economics at the Australian National University in Canberra. But you might think, wait, what does an economist have to do with water? Well, it turns out that the management of water resources leads to complex areas of public policy, the sort of problems you need an economist to help solve. For example, it's not just us humans who need water. The food that we eat can't be grown without water. And so without water, and I don't just mean from rainfall, without water that is diverted for irrigation, that waters crops, we wouldn't get the food that we eat and we wouldn't be able to sell that food to other countries and other people who need that food. Here in Australia, a lot of that food is grown in the Murray-Darling Basin, which is our largest system of waterways. In fact, it covers an area the size of France and Germany combined. One of the big challenges for the basin is preserving the river system while also allowing water to be used by people who work and live around it. And getting that right and getting that solved for all of us is a tough, tough thing to do because there's always competing demands for good, fresh water. That's even more challenging when you consider that Australia is the world's driest inhabited continent and home to weather extremes. In the Murray-Darling Basin, for example, we have major droughts, but we also have major floods. Farmers purchase water entitlements to remove water from streams and rivers throughout the basin to help grow their crops. That includes storing water in dams to get them through challenges such as droughts. That needs to happen, but at the same time, that can't compromise downstream communities and the water that they drink and the quality of the water. That's the trade-off that we've been facing for a long time in Australia. To try to ease pressure on the river systems, the Australian government sometimes buys back water entitlements from irrigators. But there's another important group that needs to be considered. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples have a deep connection to land and water. Take the case of the Barkindji people, who were granted the largest native title claim in New South Wales, but... They didn't get any water, yet they call themselves the people of the Barker, the Barker is a river. So those are the sorts of things that need to be sorted out. There's another big complication when we consider the issue of water, climate change. Earth's climate is always changing, but these changes have sped up because carbon emissions have caused temperatures to rise. Warming temperatures increase evaporation, reducing water supplies. And that's already happened. Perth is getting much less rainfall than it did 30 years ago. What we're seeing in the Murray-Darling Basin, there is a reduction in stream flows. So the amount of water going down a stream or a river is declined because of climate change. And that's why we need good policy, to not just tackle the issues of today, but the realities of tomorrow. So the next time you turn on the tap, Professor Grafton has a challenge for you. Think about where that water will end up, where it came from, its source, and where it goes. Just think about that, because knowledge, awareness, is, and understanding is the beginning of action.